What's up, YouTube? This is Eric Kelly, a.k.a. The Tech Gentleman, bringing you guys another video. And today I'm going to be giving you guys my LG G6 story. It's sort of a review, but also there are a couple of differences. Just to let you know up front, this will not be an unbiased review. I will not be speaking about the LG G6 as though it's in a vacuum and no other devices exist. I'm going to be directly comparing it to other devices that I've used and my experience with smartphones over time. So in my eyes, a review is where you take a device and act like nothing else exists and you just talk about that device by itself and you're unbiased and you're objective. That's not going to be the case. I've got other devices. You guys are going to have other choices for devices when you go try to buy something. So that's going to be my perspective of this review. Before I get going, I want to remind you guys to hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. If you want to keep up with what I got going on, and I also take questions and feedback from there. If this video helps you out at all, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or leave some comments in the description as well. Without further ado, let's talk tech. Alright guys, let's get into it. The first thing, and the most obvious thing I want to get into is the design of the LG G6. So LG changed their design language up this year. They've always had, well not always, but they've usually gone with on-screen buttons, but they've chosen to go with the 18 by 9 aspect ratio where the screen is longer and narrower. Um, it was kind of polarizing when it first happened, um, but I think that it's really, I've gotten used to it. It doesn't take that long to get used to, especially if it's your only device you're using. Um, it will take a little longer if you're going back and forth between you know, the 16 by 9 devices and this device, it'll feel kind of funny for longer, but as soon as you get it, as soon as you start using it, it's it's going to be pretty natural uh, for you to go ahead and get used to it. And it just feels better in the hand. I think that one-handed use with a bigger screen, 16, I mean 18 by 9 is definitely the way to go for the future. I hope all phones kind of adapt this aspect ratio. That's my perfect, I mean, that's my personal opinion. All right. Um, I like that design feature. Um, so the front is pretty bare, no buttons, all screen for the most part. So that allows you to get a 5.7 inch screen into a very small footprint. It's probably along the same size as a device that has a 5.1 or 5.2 inch screen. Think about the Galaxy S7 from last year. That's about where this guy falls in right now. Um, LG with their signature dual camera set up on the back, fingerprint sensor, sensor at the bottom, with the middle down there. Uh, I like the look, it's very clean. Um, I like that um, they chose to go with the flat sides. It makes the phone feel secure in your hands. You don't feel like you're going to drop it all the time. I feel a lot more confident using this without a case. Um, I can't say the same for the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. They feel great. They feel amazing in the hand. They feel like a piece of jewelry, you know, some fine craftsmanship going on there. But this phone just feels kind of like a tool. Like you're supposed to hold it in your hand. You're supposed to use it. You're supposed to pick it up. And I don't really feel the need to put a case on it. Um, I definitely can't say that about the S8 or S8 Plus. Um, it, you know, on top of the fact that me and both me and my wife <laughs> dropped them and had to get them replaced. Um, this phone has just been kind of tough. These I have the platinum version, and you can't really see it in the video, but it's actually scuffed up and scratched on the back. But the the decision to go with the little brushed metal, I think, really helps a lot to hide those scratches and scuffs. Um, so I think over time, this design is going to hold up very well. It's also water resistant. Um, so as far as durability goes, it's, um, it's probably going to be one of the most durable flagships um, this year, just because of the, of the design <clears throat> that LG has gone with. Um, on that same note, the build quality is excellent. They chose great build materials, nice, um, sturdy aluminum band going around the phone. Glass front and back. I mean, how tough can you make glass? It is what it is. Uh, but I feel like if I drop this phone, it'll definitely survive better than the S8 or S8 Plus because they don't have the curved screen. Um, I'm not going to put that to the test. I'll let somebody else do that. But um, that definitely has my vote of confidence when it comes to uh, durability and build quality. It's pretty much the basic formula for phones. You got a phone, you want to make it feel good, feel premium. Glass and metal, man. There are no other materials right now that really can, uh, maybe ceramic, but ceramic's a little more brittle um, and a little more costly to uh, to maneuver and build with. But um, 
you know, I think the glass and metal is definitely a good look for a flagship at this point. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is go over some of the features. This phone really didn't have any gimmicks per se. Uh, this is more so like an LG staple along with that lag right there. Open up the camera. Um, but, um, you know, LG, they have their dual camera set up. So what you end up getting is, you know, you have two options and they're both the same resolution camera this time. So you get to do the wide angle and you get to do the, I guess the closer field of view. And when you're zooming in and out, it actually goes between those two cameras. So I can zoom in, zoom out, zoom out. And you saw it pop to that wide angle camera there. And that transition is a lot better than it used to be last year on the G5 and the V20. And I think that has to do with the fact that they're using the same resolution cameras this year. I think that helps out a lot. So you maintain that quality when you're zooming out as well. Um, it's, a, it's a cool feature. You definitely get shots that you can't get with just a standard lens. So if you're kind of trying to get a lot of people in the picture or you don't have that much room to back up, you're trying to take a picture of a building or a sign or something outside that's really big, but kind of up close, that wide angle definitely gives you some extra leverage. Uh, so that's a cool feature of the camera. Um, like I say, the, the negatives of the camera, um, my wife will attest to this, it's good, it's capable. I've actually got some comparisons between pictures from the G6 and the SA Plus on my Google Plus page. It's one of my collections. Go there and compare the pictures. Bright light, daylight, I mean, it's blow for blow. It's really your choice as far as the color temperature and things like that, but the, the pictures look great. Where it falls apart is going to be once the lighting starts getting kind of funky, you go inside and maybe there's not perfect lighting on your subject. Um, the autofocus is going to be a pain and sometimes it just never gets whatever you're shooting in focus. It's kind of blurry, especially if it's moving around. It is like I say, I'm coming from dr my daily driver being a Galaxy S8 Plus. This year, last year is a, a Galaxy S7 Edge. Those cameras, as far as the autofocus, I mean, they just can't be beat, man. At this point, they're, they're the champs and they kind of spoil you. So <clears throat> that's definitely one area of improvement as far as the camera goes. Um, but like I said, as far as features, this phone really didn't have any, which is, you know, it's kind of cool. I think if you're looking for just a solid daily driver, um, as far as feature set goes, you know, LG didn't really, you know, spend a lot of time trying to put a lot of gimmicks into this phone. I think after last year, the G5 was pretty much a, a gimmick cesspool with the modularity and all that stuff. And they really just needed to go back to basics. Like I said, good phone, has certain build materials, feels a certain way in the hands, you know, nice display. Um, you know, I think they've, they've, they've figured out what's important. You know, they focus on the camera a little bit more. Uh, so it is better than last year, but they still got some room to go. But it's not bad. Uh, next up is the software. So speaking of things that aren't bad, um, the software doesn't fall into that category. Software is kind of bad. As you see, I have a different launcher on here. I have the Pixel launcher on here. Um, and I've also installed a theme, which I'll show you where to go to do that. Because that's something that you're going to want to do. Um, and make sure you check out my first five things to do on the LG G6. I'm trying to do this from behind the camera. And one of the first things you want to do is go to the theme store and download a theme. So this, so they have a stock theme, but I've actually gone with the kind of silver platinum, the actual platinum theme there in the middle. Um, it does a, a couple things. One thing it does is it calms down all the different colors that you get on the G6 when you go into like the settings and the UI and stuff like that. Um, LG just has no idea what colors go together. I don't know what they're doing over there. Um, but coming up with themes and colors and icons is not it. Um, the software is just out the box. For some reason, it's just not as snappy. It's not as fast as the S8 um, or the S8 Plus. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But they just... Is just inherently a little bit slower. Probably more consistent over time, but it's just going to be a little bit slower out the gate. Um, but if you only have this device, then you have nothing to compare it to. You won't really know. So it won't be that big of a difference. 
But um, as far as software goes, yeah, I, I personally don't like it. Um, so I throw in another theme and I throw on another launcher. And outside of that, it's it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, they don't have a lot of gimmicks or, or stuff like that that they're trying to throw at you in the software. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm going to keep it moving and go on to the audio. So the audio is kind of interesting this year. Um, last year they did the you know quad DAC, um, but this phone doesn't have the quad DAC. That's a pretty good DAC, but it doesn't have the quad DAC from the V20 um, because we're in America. There are some other variants that actually have the quad DAC, but they don't have wireless charging, which is, I guess, a, another feature of this phone. Uh, it has built-in wireless charging, which is pretty cool. Um, it doesn't work too well with the Samsung wireless charger. So if you got some of those sitting around, you want to use this phone on it, it won't be super happy sitting on there. You have to play around with it as far as the, the spacing on it to get it to work well. But um, it it will work eventually. It's just not going to be not going to be great. Uh, but like I said, as far as the headphone jack audio, which it does have up top up here, um, it's, it's pretty good. It's better than the Galaxy devices from last year. I can tell you that personally. Um, it is a little bit better. Definitely not as good as the V20, though. It didn't have the uh, the hi-fi mode where it can, you know, boost the uh, audio quality and the volume if you're listening through headphones or using this on the aux jack in your car. Um, but it, it is pretty good, though. The audio quality out of the speaker, eh, it's all right. It's a mono bottom firing speaker. Now, there's only so much you can do with one speaker. I think they next up for them would really be kind of experimenting with how to get better sound out of the device. Um, especially they're going to continue down that kind of, you know, path of being trying to have the best audio on a phone. Um, the competition is getting stiff. Some of the cheaper devices like the Axon 7 from last year, I know, really gave them a run for their money when it came to audio on the device. And if they're not going to do dual speakers, you know, on the front, going to do a bottom firing i think right now the the definite way to go with that is um, a speaker up front up top and one on the bottom working simultaneously to give you some semblance of stereo sound or either like a you know a tweeter and woofer kind of setup um, there's definitely some room for improvement there but like i say um, the audio is is pretty good you know you won't pick this up and be shocked and say it sounds like trash. Definitely won't have that issue. Um, so moving on to the screen. Uh, the screen is nice. It is HDR compatible. Um, as of right now, I think the only provider of HDR content that's, that works with this phone is gonna be from Amazon Prime Video, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Netflix supports HDR as well. Um, also, YouTube has some HDR content, but you're kind of waiting for then to flip the switch and allow it to start working on this phone. But outside of that, the phone, the the display is, is great. It's tack sharp. Um, it is a little dim, but I've noticed the LG screens all tend to have to work a little harder to be brighter. Uh, right now, I'm under a couple of, of lights in the kitchen. I got this at 50%. But outside, when I whip out a S8 Plus or um, pretty much any other phone, especially one with an AMOLED screen, this LCD screen is usually pretty dark. I have to ramp up the brightness, which kind of hurts it because the higher the brightness, the bigger the hit on battery life, which is another story I'll get to later on in the video. But it really, um, you know, if they can get it brighter, I don't know what they need to do. I know that there are some bright LCDs out there. They definitely need to, need to do that. But besides that, it's a great looking screen. Um, no complaints. Like I said, it looks tack sharp. I actually like the color temperature. Um, it's a little cooler. Um, the AMOLED screens tend to run a little bit warmer, kind of have a more reddish-orange hue in my experience. Uh, the LG screens, their LCDs tend to be a little bit bluer, which I don't mind. <clears throat> but um, the screen is is, is nice, um, especially once you go into the settings and you change the scaling. Well, not the scaling, but the, the screen size is what they call it. So I go to, to the settings, and I'm going to... There we go. So you go into settings and you go to display size. And I've got mine all at the bottom, but if you raise it up, 
to where it is out the box. Everything is kind of bigger, and it just it just doesn't use the screen real estate very well, in my opinion. Um, the screen has a lot of pixels, so it can display smaller stuff very well. If you don't have a problem with your eyes, uh, definitely bump it down. It makes everything look sharper, and you just get more content on the screen as well at one time. So that's uh, my only advice when it comes to, to the screen that needs to be changed. Um, so on to battery life. So the battery life on this phone, um, is not the best. I struggle to get three hours of screen on time. Like I said, especially if you're outside a lot, their brightness is cranked up. Um, I know that my life as far as notifications and accounts that I'm syncing isn't every day. So I kind of, you know, kind of a little bit lenient on that, on battery life usually because my scenario isn't normal. But this phone was dying pretty quickly. It was dying a lot faster than I'm, I'm used to. Um, and I think it really had a lot to do with the screen brightness having to be cranked up. Um, but also, it just wasn't, this doesn't seem to be as well optimized. Um, I don't know. But like I said, for me, about three hours of screen on time is what I was getting out of this guy. Um, and I, you know, I, I use it. I'm not gentle. I don't make, I don't, I don't have any of the battery saving, you know, stuff on. I do use Google's native battery optimization stuff, but um, as far as battery saving stuff, I, I don't use it. I let it go until it dies and I want all the power of my phone until it dies. So that's just me. Um, but like I said, battery life um, is okay. Probably be better for somebody with less accounts. I'll say it's kind of moderate, you know, regular, not outstanding or anything like that. Um, and last thing I want to talk about the ecosystem. So nowadays when you buy a device, um, Android or iOS, you're buying into an ecosystem. So what is the ecosystem? That's going to be what kind of accessories, um, do you get and what kind of compatibility with existing stuff do you have from a device? So, you know, when you buy an Apple, Apple's going to be, you know, you buy that iPhone is going to be going to work well with your Mac, you know, your Apple TV, um, they have their whole ecosystem of other devices that you can use. LG doesn't really have that. You know, last year they tried to kind of create one with the modularity and the VR headset and the, you know, the camera plug on, plug in and the DAC and all that stuff. America, we didn't see any of that really. And so this year, all you get is the phone. There's really nothing else that you can get that will, you know, add on to this phone or enhance its capabilities or anything like that. Um, so you're kind of just using the phone. But when you look at what Samsung is doing, I mean, they have a whole host of accessories that are designed specifically for their phone. You know, you've got the DeX um, little computer station. You've got wireless chargers. You've got, you know, your VR, your Gear VR headset and things like that that work and are designed specifically for your Samsung device. Um, on the LG, you can buy a case and then that's going to be it. That's all you got to worry about. No other real accessories or anything to enhance this phone. Um, so the ecosystem is lacking, and I think that that's what um, keep people on your on your platform. Once they buy into that ecosystem, start buying those accessories designed specifically for that device, then you know, you're going to be tempted to continue to buy devices that are compatible with that stuff you spent your money on, right? So you're not going to go out and buy Apple TV and then subscribe to a service that doesn't work on your Apple TV. You know, you're not going to buy a whole bunch of lightning accessories and then next year turn around and buy something totally different without thinking about it a lot first. Um, I know LG's sales numbers just came out for this past, uh, for the first half of the year, and they're disappointing. And the reason is, you know, Samsung exists. You know, they, they're not even competing with Apple yet. Everybody's waiting on the iPhone, but, you know, Samsung is really kind of killing everybody in that uh, the advertising and the ecosystem game. You know, you feel like you're buying a device and you have a lot of options and flexibility with it. So they definitely are lacking on the ecosystem front. Like I said, they tried last year, but they just kind of dropped it all. I think they needed to refine it some. Um, but I do like this this form factor. Just, uh, you know, give the people something to, you know, some expandability and some accessories. You know, show people that you actually care about your device and, you know, let them have something. Let them be proud to have some other accessories. That's my opinion. But uh, guys, that's pretty much my my G6 story. Um, 
like I said, very specific to my experiences. Um, <clears throat> like I said, this video helped you out at all. Make sure you like, comment, uh, subscribe, and share as well. But um, that's all I got for you guys. Until next time.